Thank you, Jake. Good morning once again. And there is almost an end of season feel here as the Leeds team all come out carrying their children at the start of this game. Plenty of very young babies down there and toddlers as well, all wearing the Leeds United kit. But of course, there is still so much to play for for both of these teams. And in many ways, this has now become a very important game for Leeds United. Hopes of automatic promotion may now have gone, but they need to try and recapture some sort of form to take into the playoffs. And Aston Villa, of course, arrive here on a record-breaking run of 10 successive defeats, and they, or 10 successive victories, I should say, and they will be keen to maintain their momentum heading into the postseason as well. They could be very dangerous opponents. This could be a dress rehearsal for the playoff final at the end of May, but there's a lot of football to be played between now and then. There was some speculation around West Yorkshire that Marcelo Bielsa would leave a number of his players out and give some of the youngsters a go in the final two games, but he's picked a strong team in the requirement to try and get some sort of form and some sort of confidence back. Only two changes from the side, which lost 2-0 at Brentford. Ejan Alioski out for the season with a knee injury, so Stuart Dallas comes in at left-back and Calvin Phillips returns in midfield. Tyler Roberts, the man to drop to the bench, so Adam Forshaw will move further forward behind Patrick Bam. It's Kassir in goal, Ailing Cooper, Janssen and Dallas. Phillips will be the defensive midfielder with Hernandez, Forshaw, Click and Harrison behind Bamford. For Villa, looking to extend their club record winning streak, they make three changes. Twanzebe, Horahan and Green come in. Yedinak, Whelan and Adoma all drop out. It is Steer in goal, El Mohamedi, Twanzebe, Mings and Taylor. Horahan is the deepest midfield player with Green, McGinn, Grealish and El Ghazi behind Codger. Stuart Atwell is our referee and it's another full house here at Ellen Road and Simon Grace and you get the feeling as well that the Leeds crowd know today's the day they've got to get behind their team because they have a big role to play themselves in the remaining two games and beyond that in the playoffs well definitely Nigel I think uh, two games ago going into the Wigan game on Good Friday everybody would have been looking at this game as being maybe the game that would secure automatic promotion back to the Premier League going uh, playing Wigan at home then going to Brentford which is never going to be easy but football as it is suffered a massive uh, disappointment of losing back-to-back -back games Sheffield United done their job last night at, at home to Ipswich and, and secured promotion so the players might be feeling sorry for themselves a little bit but when you've got 30 odd thousand inside Ellen Road cheering you on you've got to go out and regroup you've got to sort of get yourself going again they've still got a second opportunity in the playoffs and that's what these supporters will be demanding today go out finish on positive note and then go into the playoffs in a real positive mindset and Leeds have just broken from their pre-match huddle they will be defending the Revy stand away to our left hand side in the first half here at Ellen Road it is a brisk chilly spring day the earlier morning sunshine has now given way to light cloud cover overhead and Aston Villa in their claret shirts blue shorts and claret socks are about to get the game underway Jack Grealish with the kickoff and one of the biggest games of the championship season is underway live and exclusive here on the home of the EFL Talk Sport 2 and Villa have won a throw in on the far side and we should mention as well that the Villa team are all wearing black armbands today along with Leeds United to mark the passing of the former Villa manager Billy McNeil, the Celtic legend earlier this week as Villa looked to build in the opening seconds with McGinn on the far side but Forshaw comes back to cut it out by the corner flag he clears down the line click into the path of Harrison and now Bamford also joins in Hernandez tries to scoop it wide to the far side but he slipped as he delivered the pass and Villa will clear up to the halfway line El Ghazi nods it down looking for Taylor and Taylor does well just to launch it down the line and he wins the throw in of Luke Ayling quickly into the path of Jonathan Codger no Tammy Abraham in the Villa side again due to his shoulder injury but he should be back for the final day next week at home to Norwich now a stylish run forward from McGinn Codger 
was caught some way off the ball but no free kick given as El Ghazi breaks now down the villa left early cross into the penalty area and the header over the top it was a real chance inside the opening 90 seconds for Andre Green great play from El Ghazi down this left hand side went through two Leeds United white shirts and he's been really impressive over the last few weeks he's been in, um, one of the key players of this run that Aston Villa have been on great balling with his left foot and you saw Andre Green coming in from the right hand side should have really at least hit the target yes not a key strength of his heading but he, he got into a great position um, and, and should have asked questions of Casilla in the goal and now Grealish with those socks roll down exposing very muscular thighs wins a throw in on this near side and his return to the Villa side has coincided with this winning streak and it's no surprise really in the matches he was absent between December and March two wins seven draws and four defeats and their season was was dribbling away wasn't it well it was and uh in the first place, they, were, they did very well to keep hold of him in the January window because there was talk of him going to uh, uh, the Premier League. But what he's coming back, he's given a big lift on the, on the ball. He's a presence, he's a cult hero at Villa Park. Um, and he does make them tick. And he'll be a key area today when you see that midfield battle. Well, Horahan's done well to win it on the far side and plays it wide towards Andre Green with an opportunity to attack Dallas. The early cross into the area, Kodji with a downward header and a scrambling Casilla, happy to see it bobble just wide. Well, Villa has started on the front foot, they've, they've been positive with the ball, getting out to the two wide players in Green and Elgazi on the left-hand side. He did Dallas on the left on the uh, left back situation, and he had Kodja in the middle of the pit in the middle of goal oh. there, who's uh, who's strong with his head and got across and uh, just put it past the post. And Villa have been the dominant team so far. And Casilla trying to play the ball out has not get straight out of play on the far side to give Villa a throw in level with the edge of the Leeds penalty area, and it's been a nervous start from the home team here as McGinn turns and shoots on the edge of the penalty area blocked by Cooper now it's hacked high into the air by Hernandez on the edge of the penalty area Al Mohamedi tries to nudge it forward he's now found McGinn McGinn though is challenged by Forshaw but Villa at the moment winning all the 50-50s and Horahan inside the centre circle now clips it wide to this near side looking for El Ghazi but it's intercepted by Ailing. but Villa quickly win it back El Ghazi again now coming in field beyond the Anson on the edge of the penalty area but Phillips was back to help him and now Hernandez Mendes will play it down the line, Bamford goes down as Mings was strong in the challenge, no free kick given, and Mings now advances towards the edge of the penalty area, and he's still going, Tyro Mings, what a run, and he goes down, and I don't think there was any attempt to foul him, and no appeals for a penalty right on the edge of the penalty area, as he slalomed his way through, and Leeds eventually will clear. Well, I think great run from Tyro Mings there from the centre-back position, but I think he slipped more than anything else, there's no contact, I don't think he was looking to dive to influence the referee but it's been a great start from Villa they've been on the front foot this is what Leeds United have done to most of the teams that come to Ellen Road in the first 5-10 minutes of the game taking the opposition to the game to the opposition but Villa have been dominant Grealish McGinn passing the ball quickly out to the wide areas getting bodies forward and Leeds have not been able to get any sort of foothold in the game so far four and a half minutes played the former Leeds manager and Villa fullback Simon Grayson with us here on Talk Sport 2 goalers at Ellen Road fantastic atmosphere inside the stadium Villa have around two and a half thousand fans here down away to our right hand side they're also making their presence felt as well as Twan Zabin on loan from Manchester United turns away from Bamford and clears long downfield Jed Steer the fourth goalkeeper used by Aston Villa in the championship this season with the goal kick and now Mings another lonely on this near side neatly turns away from Hernandez scoops it down the line and it's one for Codger to chase and Janssen gets there first and both Janssen and Cooper outnumber Codger and they find their goalkeeper Casilla now Phillips White to this near side and Ailing popped in field and Andes will look for it but it's Phillips who plays it forward for Bamford but it's straight to Horahan and Horahan tries to find El Ghazi on this near side the Villa left and it's straight out of play for a throw into Leeds I tell you something you can see that Villa are confident in their own ability Dean's got them on the front foot they're snapping into the challenges they're winning the second balls and Leeds as I said previously can't get hold of the ball they can't get people into the play like Hernandez not sticking with Banford when it goes into his feet and allowing Klitsch to, to get up and support we've not really seen uh, Harrison touch the ball so far because Leeds United have not been able to get into Villa's uh, attacking half six minutes played 
Nil-nil at Ellen Road between Leeds United and Aston Villa on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. And Dean Smith stood arms folded beneath us here as we look out from the gantry slung beneath the roof of the main stand here at Ellen Road. It's his second visit to Leeds this season. His final match in charge of Brentford was also here. A 1-1 draw back in October before he moved across to his boyhood club to replace Steve Bruce. Now Ayling coming forward for Leeds down the right. The cross into the area deflected. It drops kindly for Hernandez on the edge of the penalty area but Horahan quickly snaps in with a challenge and Villa will try and break now with Grealish and Harrison actually does the job for Grealish by finding Al Mohamedi on the far side but under pressure Grealish then knocks it straight out of play and it will be a throw in to Leeds United and after a rather languid feel before the start of the game on and off the field Simon it's become the sort of game he maybe believed it would have been a couple of weeks ago yeah definitely the, the atmosphere here both uh, both sets of teams looking to to try and stamp their authority on the game Villa has started the better but we've just seen Leeds United there attacking the goal to our right but they've got to be careful because Villa have got players with pace in the team that can counter-attack very quickly um, and, and certainly Leeds United back four have to be aware of those situations. Seven minutes played. If Leeds fail to win this game, then Sheffield United's promotion to the Premier League will be mathematically confirmed. They are currently six points clear of Leeds. Leeds, of course, have two games to play, but the Blades have a much superior goal difference. And what is it now? Just about 12, 13, is yeah. it? Or maybe more? So it would basically mean that Leeds would have to thump Villa here as the ball into the penalty area just skips behind Hernandez and is gathered by Steer and then they would need to maybe go to Ipswich and win by 8 or 9 on the <laughs> final day and Ipswich are bad but not that bad here is McGinn turns away from Forshaw now over the halfway line for Villa it's a firm challenge from Click who is now the one remaining ever present in this Leeds team this season following Alioski's injury at Brentford and they've had, had real bad luck with left backs Barry Doug Douglas of course also out of the team so Stuart Dallas having to fill in and that could be a potential weakness both today and in the closing weeks of the season yeah definitely Alioski has, has moved back to that left back position from uh, the left more advanced left wing role but you know what you're going to get from Stuart Dallas very experienced player international player adaptable versatile so uh, he'll give his best uh, in that position but it's not ideal for Leeds Ming slides in with a firm challenge on the edge of the penalty area but Leeds have it back Ailing with the cross just behind Bamford shot in by Harrison but he never got hold of it eight yards out at the far post and Bielsa up off his bucket towards the edge of his technical area because he knows that should have been the opening goal yeah good ball in from Ailing and it just behind Patrick Bamford who's of there uh, they got in front of them, uh, I think it was um, Tyrone Mings, and then Harrison's coming off the left wing, falls on his right foot and totally miscues it. And uh, he's had one of the two of them opportunities over the last few weeks that he's not been able to, to take, uh, but it was a good opportunity for Leeds to at least try and hit the target. Yeah, the goal difference between Leeds and Sheffield United is 13, following the Blades 2 0 win live on Talksport 2 against Ipswich last night. So. The reality is, Sheffield United are promoting. But it just has to be rubber stamped. Now Tuan Zebe carrying the ball forward. 60 or 70 yards into the Leeds penalty area. And he goes down three yards from the byline. Cooper with the challenge. And that's twice now that the central defenders for Villa have chanced their arm and gone a long way. Yeah, they've, they've not been frightened in coming forward and stepping in. Both players are comfortable on, on the ball and, and they've got good pace about them and, and look to commit to any of the Leeds back four. Unfortunately, run into bodies there and uh, just petered out, but it's something Leeds might need to address. Now click on the edge of the penalty area. Lovely ball between the legs of the defender, but he couldn't quite pick out Hernandez down the right. And now there's real pace to El Ghazi down the left-hand side that he runs into Janssen and in the end, I think El Ghazi was more preoccupied with Janssen than the ball. They both end up in a heap and Click comes away with the ball. We play 10 minutes on Talk Sport 2 and it's nil-nil at Ellen Road in the Championship. It's not been a dull affair has it Nigel so far both teams looking to get forward especially Villa on the counter attack Gaz has started the game really brightly he's carried the ball 30-40 yards there didn't quite get an end product but they've certainly got to be aware of his, his, his confidence and ability Villa have come into Ellen Road with a real swagger here as Horahan concedes the free kick 
it way inside his own half. He went down believing he should have had it, but Stuart Atwell, the referee, has given it the other way. You've got John McGinn just hobbling around from a challenge as well. These are two sides who are not resting easy before the playoffs. And I rightly so. Neither team can afford to rest or take it easy because they want to keep the momentum going, as we mentioned in the pre-match, that Villa want to add to the 10 wins that they've won already, they've got already. Leeds need to get back on track, try and bit more confidence into the group after two defeats. Well, Villa, theoretically, could still catch West Brom in fourth place. And now the ball falls to click on the edge of the penalty area and he tries a dipping right-footed shot which had a bit of dip but was always too high. Well, we've seen him score some great goals already this season uh, from distance. There, dropped to him on his right foot, got it out of his feet and hit it quite well. He's just looking for that extra little top spin to try and take it over Jed Steer's head but uh, didn't threaten the goal in the end. Well, both of Villa's central defenders are on loan, Twanzebi and Mings, but they've already shown their quality. And now McGinn with a long ball forward, wide to the right-hand side. Kodja sees Janssen go to ground, but also come away with the ball on the edge of the penalty area. Dallas infield towards Foreshaw. And now Cooper will find Phillips once again with the top knot bobbing. Wide to this near side and the ponytail daily. Click, outnumbered on the halfway line, but he's clever enough to find Hernandez. And now Aiden can charge forward down the right-hand side. A long diagonal ball, wide to the far side, taken down superbly by Harrison. Infield onto his right foot, he plays the one-two with Bamford. Harrison to the byline, the shot's deflected high over the top, and it's a Leeds corner. Great play from Luke Aylin, drives into the Villa's half. It's a diagonal ball, 50 yards into Harrison. Plays a really cute one-two with Patrick Bamford, but great defending from Hella Helmanadi. Stayed with the run just as about Harry. Harrison's about to pull the trigger and try and hit the target he gets across makes the block and he goes out for a Leeds corner corner on the far side the Leeds left as they attack the south stand here high towards the far post Steer stays on his line Mings rises to clear and now Andre Green has won the aerial challenge with Harrison and he can break down for Villa completely outnumbered inside the Leeds half and he was caught there by Hernandez and that's a cheap free kick given away by Hernandez it'll also be booked and he simply did not need to make that challenge there were four Leeds players around Andre Green and Hernandez with a very silly foul well as I mentioned earlier that it's one of them situations where Villa get on the counter attack Green is quick El Ghazi is playing catch up and, and running back uh, Forshaw was, was going to deal with Green and uh, Hernandez gets across and could you say it was a, a tactical free kick yes and no I think there was enough bodies getting back around him so uh, he's not a dirty player or anything like that but it's a right decision from the from the uh, from Paul um, Stuart Atwell the referee well, Hernandez ended the game at Griffin Park on Monday in tears that defeat in the collapse over Easter has really meant so much to Pablo Hernandez who at the age of 34 may be looking at potential opportunities to reach the Premier League running out now Taylor Looks for Grealish on this near side, but Grealish had stayed where he was, and Taylor's ball just ahead of Grealish goes straight out of play. Now Click with a long ball forward as the sun comes out here at Allen Road, but it's beyond four short, and it's gathered by Steer on the edge of the penalty area. 15 minutes played, nil-nil here so far on the home of the EFL Talk Sport 2. League one action coming up at three o'clock, Coventry against Shrewsbury, and then two big games from the Championship on Tuesday and Wednesday. It is Millwall against Bristol City and Swansea against Derby in the race for the final playoff place at the moment. Derby have the advantage, and if they win at Swansea, they will be in a very strong position heading into the final day. It would have been interesting if Swansea had held on to the lead yesterday going into these two games yeah. that they could have still been with a, a little chance of getting into the playoffs. Absolutely. And we also have European action this week. Barcelona-Liverpool Champions League semi-final first leg on Talk Sport on Wednesday night. And Eintracht Frankfurt against Chelsea should be a very good game in the Europa League semi-first leg. That's on Thursday here on Talk Sport 2. Aston Villa with 10 wins in a row. Currently nil-nil here against a lead side who have lost four of their last seven games and people will often look at where things went wrong in the race for automatic promotion as Harrison comes forward on the far side he'll try and take on Green but the fact is 
Norwich have lost one game in the calendar year. Sheffield United have lost two. Leeds have lost eight. Yeah, eight games is, is too many if you're going to get automatic promotion. Um, and running with a small squad, the injuries has taken its toll a little bit on them as well. I think it's, I'm not going to criticise the, the coach or the, the football club, but I still felt January was a big month where they could have maybe brought a couple of extra Neither players in. And maybe Dan James would have made a difference if they could have got him through the Yeah, game. just to that, give them that extra bit of lift and that, but it didn't happen and they went with the squad that uh, we, we've seen on shore for the, uh, the last two months. Now Hernandez, 25 yards out, coming in field from the right-hand side, slips it on to Bamford, flip wide to the right and click, can he keep the ball in play? He can, but the cross had no real whip behind it and it's gathered easily by Steer on the edge of the six yard area well I'm well, no, just picking up on the point again there that the recruitment in January doesn't guarantee that you're going to be uh, successful or get uh, automatic promotion but I still think it would have helped the way that Leeds have played all season with the tempo and the training methods that they have them extra couple of bodies why I just give one or two players a little bit of breather at crucial matches uh, over the last few weeks Kemar Roof injured again today with a hip problem so not even on the bench Izzy Brown and Mateus Bogus from the under 23 side which have won their league are also involved of course Brown on loan from Chelsea but he's been seemingly injured the whole season well he's played a lot for the under 23s but it just didn't seem like Bielsa fancied him or trust him to come into the team or into the squad seeing back today so there's a gamble when they signed him when he wasn't fit um, and a gamble that probably hasn't paid off he's now 22 and he really needs to be playing somewhere on a regular basis now Hernandez on the Leeds right hand side coming in field to find click back towards Hernandez again Forshaw joins in on the edge of the penalty area wide to Ailey and the cross driven in looking for Bamford but it's met by Horahan and click will try and shield the ball and see the ball dribble out for a corner on this near side which he does as Leeds look to build some momentum here with 18 minutes play that it's goalless on Talk Sport 2 but they have a corner on this near side which Harrison will take and Leeds have scored 12 goals from corners so far this season Harrison will look to play this short and he goes all the way out towards Phillips 25 yards out the low cross into the penalty area met by Mings and now Grealish believes he was caught by Phillips but no free kick given and Nandes with the cross into the near post and it was a flick header from Bamford which had the power taken out of it by Horahan and it plops gently into the arms of Steer yeah good ball in but he's good player for Horahan he's that holding midfield player for Villa that wants to get on the ball and play but he still has to do his defensive duty got a cross near Bamford and not allowed him to get a free header again we've just seen Mings clear a couple of opportunities he's been he's died again really well you can see that he's a Premier League player suffered for a few injuries already at Bournemouth but he's been a massive uh, boost for Aston Villa and they've used the loan market really well Twan Sebe, Mings and El Ghazi all involved from the start here today now Hernandez challenged by McGinn and this time the free kick's been given and Hernandez has gone down clutching his face Dean Smith, the Villa manager is furious with the decision and he quickly goes across to Darren England the fourth official because he doesn't even, even believe it was a foul Leeds believe it was something more than that no, look, he's made a challenge and he's, he's caught him but he's not an, an arm or an elbow going round and Anders rolled around a little bit made it a little bit too dramatic but Stuart sure, Atwell as we've mentioned there just just allowed him to get on and it's not affected and Anders is off taking the free kick into Banford trying to flick it on and Harrison still stuck out wide on the left where he should be looking for the flick on 20 minutes played 0-0 Harrison with a cross into the penalty area. Mings is able to cushion it down for Horahan, who volleys clear as Dallas looks to make the challenge. Now Codger inside the centre circle, controls it well on his thigh and lays it back to McGinn. Threaded through towards Grealish, but a solid challenge from Cooper. Well, I thought it was, but in the end, it's a free kick and a yellow card for Cooper. I do not see that decision whatsoever. I think it's a, it's a ball there for for Leo Cooper to make the challenge he's won the ball clearly not caught Jack Grealish anything like that very very strange decision because I think that now we've got Jack Grealish going on to the floor obviously tonight supporters not happy with his reaction it was a strong challenge from Liam Cooper I'm not saying it wasn't but it was one that he got the ball and, and never endangered Jack Grealish pretty, pretty sure that well, Grealish was quick to get to his feet to appeal for the 
yellow card or for the decision and now he's gone down and looks to be in some pain well I, I've made my sort of feelings clear on that what about you Nigel did you, did you think it was uh, well, a I yellow card in the commentary I thought, yeah. he, well, he thought he won the ball it was a great challenge it was a strong challenge yes but and not followed through with his, with his other leg after he played the ball that was a great challenge well, Grealish it? doesn't wear shin guards and maybe well that's his own fault if you're going to get caught with a challenge you've got to wear shin pads but ultimately as well that's going to put maybe Leon Cooper on a little bit of um, uh, a knife edge he doesn't need to be making another challenge now and then getting the, uh, the Leeds United down to 10 men strange decision from Stuart Atwell well he's still down Grealish we played nearly 22 minutes Leeds United nil, Aston Villa nil on Talk Sport 2. We support the work of Prostate Cancer UK. Visit prostatecanceruk.org slash football to find out how you can help. And together we can help stop prostate cancer killing a man every 45 minutes. And Grealish is back on his feet and he's showing his left ankle to Stuart Atwell. He's now striding across towards this near side. I'm not sure Jack Greeley should get too much sympathy from the Leeds United faithful for the rest of the game. And the referee, to be fair. Well, he does have a, some sort of plaster or some sort of guard. But yeah, he does right have it. He, he wears real small shin, guard, shin pads, to be fair. Because I think it's a law that you cannot wear, you have to wear them. But he, he, these are really tidy ones. So he, well, he's he, showing he's, his left ankle to Darren England, the fourth official. just see yeah a very small shin guard poking out of the top of his, his his right sock but it's the the left ankle which was caught but if he'd had regular shin guards on yeah and even though even that after that I still don't think it was that there's too much in the challenge in, in it as well well here is McGinn now weaving his way into the penalty area fires a shot towards the near post but no power behind it and Casilla is able to gather and he quickly bowls out to his fellow Spaniard Hernandez now in field towards Bamford laid off to click down the right hand side Mings has been drawn out of the centre to try and make the challenge and click has bypassed him to pick out Bamford again who has looked to snake his way beyond Horahan towards the byline back towards Hernandez down the leads right clipped into the penalty area click though losing out to Mings and Villa will try and clear and Mings plays the 1-2 with El Ghazi and Mings is off and running again and he scoops a good looking ball wide to the far side but it just spins away from Andre Green as it gathers pace off the turf and it's a throw into Leeds on the far side with 24 minutes played and it's 0-0 here at Ellen Road well for a centre back Tyrone Mings he's certainly been involved a lot of all the good things for Aston Villa defensively but attacking wise as well he seems to break things up get his head onto things blocks onto things but then he'll step in he'll look to utilise his strengths on the ball trying to get it into Codger into Green on the right hand side Grealish is the number 10 and McGinn just behind there Codger well Mings had such rotten luck with injuries at Bournemouth following his move from Ipswich as Ailing crosses into the penalty area and it's blocked at the near post by Taylor and it will be another corner for Leeds and they've dominated the corner count so far but neither goalkeeper has really had a difficult shot to save I think Leeds have responded really well from a difficult 10 minutes where Villa dominated I think Leeds have been the better team for the last 10 minutes or so Harrison will take the corner it will be an in-swinger from this near side towards that near post flicked on by Bamford and it's Codger back there defending he now runs the ball out of the penalty area for sure quickly wins it back Dallas now cut square of the penalty area and finds Click quickly on towards Harrison Harrison with a cross towards the far post but there was nobody there waiting in a white shirt and it's gone behind for a goal kick I think when you look at both teams they're very similar aren't they they really want to play out from the back they've got uh, wide players come from out to win they've got midfield runners looking to get forward um, and, and they are very similar in how they set up and how they play and the risks that they sometimes take I think the only difference is that Aston Villa have got a little bit more pace in the team with the, with uh, Green, Codger and uh, Agazi on the left-hand side. Leads with Hernandez, Banford and, and Harrison and not quite got the dynamism of, of uh, a front three that uh, Aston Villa have got. And that was a problem for Villa last season. Of course, they got 83 points. They were always secured a playoff place. 
weren't quite good enough for the top two, but they were a bit one pace, weren't they? Yeah, um, and, and I think people have looked at the football club that what needed to improve, and, and they've gone out and done that, recruited well, especially in January after a disappointing start to the season where Steve Bruce lost his job. But it's now got a youthful look to it. McGinn burst forward, he's got strong body sh- uh, presence as well. Uh, Grealish obviously can manoeuvre the ball around, but they've got out and out pace at times. Boos for Grealish there as he finds Horahan and now Green down the right hand side just losing out to Dallas who is having to improvise all the time here as a right footed player playing in the left back position but very good professional Stuart Dallas it's never easy to quite to, to do that I did it in my career at times would play right back and then get moved across the, the left back role and you've got to adjust your position your body shape and you've got to trust that you, your left foot isn't just there for standing on that you've actually got to use it a few times but you do feel a little bit uncomfortable to start with now McGinn midway inside the Leeds half plays it wide to this near side the left and El Ghazi Taylor finding El Ghazi once again and it's a poor ball from him though almost played in click but Mings was there on the cover Grealish will chase into the penalty area but he knew that it was always going to spit into the arms of the former Real Madrid man Kiko Casilla who almost plays Cooper into trouble here is Janssen back towards Casilla again and Leeds always try and split the central defenders and play out but at times in the championship when you're against the high press that can be dangerous you've got to be careful because teams can set the trap with you you can play into the first one and then there might be the trigger from one of the center forwards and the midfield players in behind to go and press and work it and if you if you get picked off then it's great play from the team that are doing it if you don't you do run the risk sometimes of uh, being the makers of your own downfall if you're not careful and, and led to mistakes and goals against now steer will clear long downfield left footed for Aston Villa and the flag is up against either Kodja or El Ghazi and Leeds have a free kick 28 minutes played nil nil here at Ellen Road on the home of the EFL Talk Sport 2 Villa were 11 8 points adrift of the final playoff place on March the 1st since then 10 successive victories and they will be guaranteed postseason football once again as they endure their longer spell outside the top flight since 1975 now Grealish on this near side he's won the ball aiming has gone down but doesn't get the free kick Grealish quickly finding McGinn on towards El Ghazi who checks his road to stay on side McGinn game goes down claiming he was pushed by Phillips inside the penalty area but Stuart Atwell waves away the appeals and Leeds now will try and bring it forward themselves on their left with Harrison back in field towards Cooper and now there is space and time for Calvin Phillips to pick out Forshaw on the edge of the penalty area he runs into traffic and then the challenge comes in from Codger on the edge of the box it'll break again and the shot from Click was deflected squirts across the penalty area here is Hernandez Forshaw again right footed shot well he's not scored for three years and he won't score there as it's high over the top no well that fact that the fact that you just said there Nigel doesn't surprise you with that shot got into a position where it's opened up in an ideal world, you'd love somebody like Click or um, Hernandez on it to try and hit the target. Sailed aimlessly over the top of the crossbar. But it looks like Grealish is struggling, to be fair. Just looking there to see if Hularin looking across to the bench, maybe to, to Dean Smith, just to suggest to get somebody warmed up just in case uh, he has to come off. Well, he's looking across towards Dean Smith now, Jack Grealish. With that hair swept back. Now Mings will have to step in before Bamford and Twanzebe helps him out steer, was just forced wide by the back pass but Twanzebe has time to receive it now on the edge of the penalty area and he's clever enough to evade the challenge of Harrison and Click. Wide to the far side now and El Mohamedy into the channel on the right for Kodja to chase. He's got there before Janssen, no real support though by the corner flag but Kodja will try and wriggle his way infield himself but the challenge comes in from Janssen. Janssen now under pressure has given it back to Kodja poke back down the line for Green can he deliver a cross into the penalty area El Mohamedy will towards McGinn he flicks it on and it's a good save by Casilla that was sneaking in at the far post and Casilla had to deal with it 
Well, it's poor play from Janssen in the first place. He covered the run of uh, Codger, then should have just put his foot through. He shouldn't be trying to work his way out from the back there when it wasn't on to do. Brought to Green, puts the ball into the box, and uh, great header and a, a diving save across from Casilla, and would have hit the bottom of uh, the bottom of the right hand target, wouldn't it? So uh, great save. But you've got to be careful. Playing the wrong areas can be uh, can you be your own downfall if you're not careful. McGinn tries to play in Grealish down the left hand side, but Phillips comes in with a challenge and then for sure is being clipped by Taylor and it will be a free kick. In fact it's McGinn who has been called towards the referee for a bit of chatting as well. Well, there's plenty of edge to this game, isn't there? The both teams are trying to win it for different reasons. It leads to try and get back on track after the two defeats. Villa to keep the run going. So if anybody was expecting it to be sort of a little bit of a dull affair, there certainly isn't because there's an edge to the uh, to the tackles, uh, people closing down each other. And also, don't forget, these, this might be somewhere down the line of a playoff semi-final or a final that either team will look into make a marker for, for the next particular encounter, if that is to be the case. Well, Leeds came from two goals down to beat Villa just before Christmas. Kemar Roof scoring an injury time winner in a 3-2 win. At that stage, Leeds were enjoying a run of seven successive victories and they were four points clear at the top in mid-January, but it fell away. Then they came back again and it seemed that Sheffield United had blown it, but... Sheffield United have just held their nerve in the closing weeks and Leeds haven't. I think I saw a stat last week sometime that probably Leeds have spent more weeks at the top of the division than any of the other teams and ultimately are not going to finish there and that that's part of football it's where you finish the season and we're not where you start it ultimately is the, is the defining moment of it all um, and full credit to Sheffield United and Norwich because they've suffered disappointment at times but what they've done is they've stuck together as football clubs and surprised a lot of people by securing them top two division uh, places in the division when a lot of other people thought it'd be some of the other so-called bigger clubs getting promoted 33 minutes played nil nil fans of Norwich and Sheffield United may disagree but you always get the feeling there was maybe more pressure on Leeds here is Hernandez with a cross into the penalty area Burahan clears Hernandez once again it's a deeper cross this time and it's too deep and it will go out of play on the far side for a throw in because when Leeds were top there's so much expectation here and so much yeah. desire to get back into the Premier League that I, I don't know does that cause problems for the players yeah he certainly can do I think no matter well, you were here in League 1 well, you know even in like. League 1 the situation is very difficult because the, the, the size of the club and the supporters that travel both home and away it's, it's there and that's you have to be a special type of player to handle that pressure to be able to cope with uh, disappointment and what, what the supporters expect from you week in and week out and that's as a player and as a manager as well and, and it has been a downfall of individuals and the teams over the last few years and, and going back to many many years years ago I was looking at social media this week and there were a few Leeds fans who were having conversations with me in inverted commas and someone said this is not as bad as being 1-0 down to Bristol Rovers <laughs> seeing Max Gradle <laughs> being sent off that was uh, an eventful to, to yeah. say the least the day that Leeds did get promotion back to the championship Hernandez now with a low shot from the edge of the penalty area and it was always four or five yards wide and it's nil nil here with 11 minutes to play in the first half on Talk Sport 2 yeah that was an eventful day just touch us you know, on that one win, win to get automatic promotion you go 10 men just before half time just after half time you you're one nil down and uh, and luckily we were fortunate to get through and uh, get promoted back to, to the championship but then it's the next stage for a club like Leeds United trying to get back to the Premier League and the Ellen Road's been sold out for a number of months now the away allocation is always going there and there will be a good addition to the Premier League one day but you've got to earn that right you've got no divine right to do it Aston Villa and other clubs will be a great addition but everybody's fighting for that opportunity and now El Ghazi's been blocked off by Janssen and it will be a free kick to Villa about 30 yards out and the reality now is that one or both of these teams won't be promoted this season well again and you look at uh, West Brom down from the Premier League last year and whoever secures the uh, the last playoff place if it's Derby County they've been on the periphery of, the, of getting into the Premier League for a number of years now playoff semi-finals last year I think probably the year before as well so some huge clubs in the championship but You've got to do whatever's required to go and win your uh, promotion. 
Grealish over the free kick for Villa right footed high into the area Mings with the header and it's wide and he did well to rise above Phillips Phillips appeals to Stuart Atwell saying he was fouled but the goal kick's been given anyway and there is a good deal going on around the technical areas Bielsa and his entourage are not happy with one or two things going on and the same could be said for Dean Smith and Richard O'Kelly yeah, he's quite aminated, aminated his, uh, his Bielsa. You don't you just see him normally just sort of lurking around on his bucket, but uh, he seems to be getting trying to get one or two. Uh, yeah. Now Grealish has been failed again, and it's another free kick for Villa, just in front of us here, down their left, and I think the Villa bench believe that Grealish is starting to get some treatment here. Well, you could just sense the ball's bouncing. Grealish gets his body in the way of, I think, maybe Calvin Phillips or Forshaw. I'm not quite sure which one it was. He took the little hit and, and gets a free kick. The reaction of the supporters is that he's made a, made a meal of it. Uh, but it ultimately, the referee's made a decision. And now Hernandez is now getting Hernandez involved with Mings. Involved in a pushing duel with Mings. As that Hernandez is a mismatch. Mings yeah. at six foot five. Hernandez, what, five eight, five ten? Well, Hernandez has already been booked, so he needs to be careful. He's trying to stand on the ball to prevent the free kick, and Atwell has pointed to him and is waving him away. That was little and hard, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Here is Hurahan with the free kick. Left footed, high towards the far post. Casilla gathers under no pressure at all, and Mings, I think was into the back of Janssen as that ball came through and Janssen didn't appreciate the challenge and you can hear from the crowd reaction that there are just one or two things beginning to happen on the field which are winding people up here as McGinn tries to find Green on the far side 37 minutes played and it's nil-nil here at Ellen Road Leeds United against Aston Villa on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. Codger takes the ball down neatly and spins away from Janssen. Needed support but he can't find Grealish because Phillips intercepts. Here is Bamford now, just inside the Villa half, rather isolated, forward towards Click, but Click was always on the wrong side of the ball as Mings came through to win it and then Mings has been fouled by Click and the free kick is given and Bielsa just channeling a bit of the old El Loco there heading towards the fourth official arms outstretched complaining and clearly Darren English speaks very good Spanish <laughs> yeah given Bielsa's uh, allegedly lack of English then uh, Darren's going to have to deal well with uh, Marcelo, now he's apologising for his actions, obviously going to be some broken uh, Spanish-English on the touchline. He line. does that, Bielsa, he, yeah. he has a go and then he quickly comes back and says, I'm sorry, as Grealish has been flattened on the far side by Phillips in front of the huge East stand here at Ellen Road and all of the Leeds crowd are on their feet believing that Grealish made the most of that but on this occasion I'm not too sure like as you said earlier there's, there's plenty going off there's little niggles there's balls going in the box Janssen's complaining that Mings has pushed him towards Casilla uh, Grealish every time he gets it seems to be have a white shirt around him does he make a meal of the odd occasions yes but also he is getting targeted as well because he's that's something you have to deal with uh, because of his such a, the talent that he's got but uh yeah, there's, there's plenty going off in uh, the first 40 minutes of this game so far. Grealish over the free kick with Horahan. Mings, Antoine Zebe are both forward waiting for it. And it's Grealish with the delivery as two Leeds players go down. And Mings clearly pushed over both Ailing and Janssen inside the penalty area. And to much ironic cheering, the Leeds fans celebrating as if they've scored a goal, they've got a free kick. He must be a big lad, Tyrone Mings, to push both Ailing and Janssen over. Yeah, you yeah, saw Mings and uh, Luke Ailing have a bit of a laugh and a draw. Uh, Janssen taking a little bit further, playing a little bit to the crowd, but uh, the reaction of the league supporters there certainly uh, acknowledge towards Stuart Atwell that they've not been uh, overly impressed by some of the decisions that he's made so far this afternoon. Here is the Swedish international, Pontus Janssen. Wide towards Ailing. Bright sunshine again here at Ellen Road, but it's a typical early spring day here with a bit chilly at times and the wind also whipping around Ellen Road when it gets the opportunity. Although not as wet and windy as it was in parts yesterday. Phillips on the far side, infield towards 
Cooper as Leeds look to build again with four and a half minutes to play in the first half here on Talk Sport 2. Coventry against Shrewsbury coming up from League One at three o'clock and there'll be news of all the Premier League games today with Sags over on Talk Sport as Foreshaw shoots on the edge of the penalty area and it comes out towards Dallas who cuts in field from the left and fires it in right footed and it's high over the top I think what was going to be interesting about today's lineup of Leeds with um, Tyler Roberts dropping out of the Leeds team he's centre forward been playing centre midfield over the last few weeks and months he gets forward a lot into the box he's still got Calvin Phillips who's uh, sat in the holding role and Forshaw has looking to break forward yes not really known as a, an attacking midfield player but he's going to some decent positions so far just like to have end product come uh, come one or two of these opportunities he's been finding himself in nil nil as click gathers on the far side for Leeds it's still nil nil between Leicester and Arsenal but Ainsley Maitland-Niles has just been sent off for Arsenal straight red card in that game as Leeds just run the ball over the byline on the far side and it will be a goal kick for Aston Villa and Kiko Casilla has been by far the busier goalkeeper so far yeah. Leeds created 54 attempts on goal against Wigan and Brentford but scored only once yeah Jed Steers had very little to do Casillas had, had, had to make a couple of good saves Codger looking to break now Codger now down the centre wide towards the right hand side and Andre Green El Ghazi looking for the cross at the far post it was Codger who tried to volley but the challenge came in and a very important challenge from Phillips just to take the ball off his toe four yards out and Codger head on hands knows that could have been the opening goal yeah really good play there from Calvin Phillips tracked the run made sure that he didn't allow Codger to get a free attempt on target got across and, and managed to get a clearance and uh, great defended now Horahan infield towards Grealish in a central area 25 yards out onto his right foot he brushes aside Phillips and tries to find Green who could be around the back the cross was blocked inside the area by Dallas a couple of Villa players turned towards the referee and appealed for handball but nothing was given then Horahan had hold of Bamford's shirt but again the referee allows it to go and Grealish has been felled on the right corner of the penalty area again this time by Stuart Dallas Dallas turns around and says Grealish dived it was a theatrical fall by Grealish but there was no doubt there was contact by Dallas well the, the, first and foremost you've got Bielsa on the touchline and Lee staff complaining that Banford well, he's pulled his shirt pulled but he, he's got to be stronger than that he's, he's a bit too lightweight not his game just holding players off never been renowned for that turnover of possession that, that Villa break forward Grealish just nicks one away from um, uh, Stuart Dallas who was committed to the challenge did he catch him or not probably didn't but he had to make sure that he was getting out of the way of the challenge so it probably is a free kick but Banford the difference between Leeds and Villa at the moment is that Codger can give him that physical presence to hold the ball up Banford is not renowned for his physical strength and doesn't give him that opportunity to, to get the midfield players up to help and support them out well there was I wouldn't say there was intent by Dallas but it was a reckless challenge yeah, yeah it, so it made it an attempt and kick. you have to get out the way of it else you could you could be uh, you could have been seriously hurt a minute to go in the first half. Free kick for Villa on the right corner of the penalty area. Hurahan could actually go for goal here. Al Ghazi and Al Mohammadi both currently in an offside position. And Stuart Atwell is being called across towards Darren England, the fourth official, on this near side. Bielsa is standing close to the fourth official. And there's a card out here. And there is a yellow card for Marcelo Bielsa. <laughs> It's all happening, isn't it, here to Ellen Road? Bielsa has been—he's been very. Uh, so just uh, see what's going on. Yeah, he's been very forthright in his opinions to the uh, to the fourth official, Darren England, on, uh, alongside him. And in this modern day now, referee, uh, referees can get the yellow cards out for uh, the coaching staff and branded one to Bielsa, which uh, the Leeds United faithful are uh, start singing his name. Well, he came to England known as El Loco, but it's only really in recent weeks yep. we've seen. 
him show any real emotion inside the technical area. Hurahan with the free kick low in towards the near post and on his haunches it's gathered by Casilla and there will be three added minutes at the end of a first half with no goals but no lack of talking points either. Forshaw coming forward now for Leeds down the right hand side. Ailing and Hernandez in support. Wide now towards Click hugging the touchline down the right. Taylor has sold himself with the challenge. Click with a left footed ball in. Headed away by Twan Zabi. Fired in by Dallas and just wide. And that was a decent effort for Leeds and one of their best right at the end of the first half. Yeah, ball in the box. Kept the second balls alive and just fell nicely for Stuart Dallas. And that's where sometimes there's a right footed left back coming inside. It drops to you and he, uh, he struck it really sweetly on the half ball in it fired past uh, Jed Steele's uh, far post but uh, good opportunity for Leeds wanting to finish the first half strongly uh, you just mentioned there about Bielsa yeah he's been very calm over the first what eight or seven or eight months of the season saw him at Brentford quite uh, getting quite um, carried away with situations and again today but that just shows you what it means to him and, 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 and his, how his team have been foot performing over the last uh, couple of games and what's at stake Twanzebe out which Bamford and Villa will play their way out right throughout their own penalty area Mings towards this near side in Taylor and it's a ball down the line for El Ghazi to chase but he turned around and quickly saw Phillips coming Phillips booms it down the line but Ayling can't keep it in play and it's a throw in for Aston Villa and we played 90 seconds of the minimum three added at the end of the first half and Bielsa has jettisoned the bucket here he is striding around the Leeds technical area and there were some great stories about his temper over many years but only in recent weeks have we really seen it come to the fore and maybe that's because Leeds are experiencing the pressure on and off the field now Dallas plays it forward towards Bamford on the edge of the penalty area twisting and turning square towards Forshaw back towards Bamford again a low shot from him and it dribbles wide left footed and yeah. it's a question you posed a few moments ago and it's worth going back to does Patrick Bamford offer enough? I, I would prefer if you could assign somebody like Patrick Bamford I think he needs somebody else to play alongside him to take maybe the physical presence away from himself he does like to drift around maybe him and Roof if the ball fit together which hasn't happened too often this year that Roof will look to run him behind with his pace a little bit stronger in his hold up play and then he could maybe play as the number 10 getting into the box into wide areas because he is a natural he is a good finisher when chances come along but his hold up play isn't sort of one of his key strengths well Stuart Dallas is just hobbling away towards the far side if they lose him Tony Garrigo will be playing left back <laughs> next week well I, I'm a fit I'm well, of course yeah, you, you could be yeah you're available yeah here is Bamford now coming forward wide to the right hand side Hernandez by the corner flag has got support from both Click and Ayling oh. as he's played in towards Ayling who had a clear sight of goal Stuart Atwell has blown the half time whistle and Leeds end the first half surrounding the referee Stuart Atwell and there are one or two gestures towards the referee which are extremely dismissive and you can hear what the Leeds crowd think of the performance of the referee in the opening half Marcelo Bielsa has also been shown a yellow card as well but the, the fact is the better football in terms of creativity in the opening 45 minutes Simon has been displayed by Aston Villa yeah I think they started the game really brightly did Villa got on the front foot passed it around really strongly and, and, and took the game to Leeds Leeds, Leeds came back into the game um, but certainly being Villa of Ascasia in the Leeds goal the questions Jed Steers had very little to do there's been a lot of niggles going around with a few uh, challenges referees not sort of uh, to the least faithful endearing themselves to them just saw at the end there normally when you finish in for the half time um, you do it when it goes out for a throw in or a goal kick not when Luke Hill is just about to burst into the box so I think um, Dean Smith will be pleased with how his team's performed will Leeds doesn't look to do anything differently at half time we're looking at Tyler Roberts having quite an extensive warm up will he come on uh, and change the sort of type of um, systems style of play but overall Dean Smith will be happy uh, with what his team's done so far. Half time, Leeds United nil, Aston Villa nil.
Thank you, Jake. And Leeds will be making two changes at the start of the second half. Gaetano Berardi, the Swiss central defender, is coming on for oh. Pontus Janssen. And Tyler Roberts is coming on. But having said that, Janssen has now emerged Dallas. late sure at half-time. Dallas. Dallas is the player who has gone off. Of course, he was limping towards the end of the first half. So Leeds is third choice left back in many ways is also injured now in the wake of Barry Douglas and Eshan Alioski so there will be a reshuffle here Berardi could play at left back and that, that looks like it, where he'll be playing and Jack Harrison is the other player who has gone off to be replaced by Tyler Roberts yeah I think when you look at the substitutions the, the Dallas one will be an enforced one through injury Berardi has played left back many many times in his career at Leeds so you can see that as a straight swap um, Harrison really didn't affect it too much in the first half didn't get a lot of the ball to be honest um, but what you'll find is that Roberts might come and play off the right hand side Hernandez comes over to the left hand side and they'll still keep the midfield three but Phillips, uh, Forshaw and, and Click. So the Leeds team will now be Casilla in goal, Ailing, Cooper, Janssen and Berardi the back four. Phillips is the deepest line midfield player with four short and click ahead of him. And it will be Roberts on one side, Hernandez on the other and Bamford down the middle. There don't look to be any changes for Villa. So that steering goal, El Mohamedi, Chuanzebe, Mings and Taylor. Hurahan the base of the midfield with McGinn and Grealish ahead of him. El Ghazi on the left, Green on the right and Kodja down the centre. Well, Leeds have had horrendous injury problems at times and they are coming back to bite them at the worst possible time here. Well, it's interesting when teams talk about um, having injury problems, selection problems, people always look into the, the, uh, the reasons behind it. People might question the, the way the intensity that leads player and uh, the way that the train might lead to fatigue and the injuries as well. Or you can just uh, actually just be unlucky as well. That, that sometimes can be... Um, you, you feel like you're jinxed sometimes in a certain position. Now Leeds are going on to the fourth choice right back, uh, left back, should I say, uh, which, which is um, probably more down to being un, uh, very unlucky. Well, Leeds have got the second half underway, attacking the Revy stand away to our left-hand side in all white, filler in claret shirts, light blue shorts, light blue socks. And the day is getting gradually warmer the longer it goes on. And it's watery spring sunshine overhead at the moment as Cooper the Leeds captain looks to bring it forward and find Phillips if it stays like this Sheffield United will be confirmed as promoted to the Premier League along with Norwich City the top two will be sorted out and really the only outstanding issue at the moment on the final day will be who finishes in the final playoff place with Rotherham, Bolton and Ipswich already confirmed as relegated now Forshaw comes forward, finds Hernandez, lovely nutmeg on McGinn and he almost picks out Bamford who had drifted towards the left-hand side and Mohamedi's clearance was charged down, now Roberts finally ailing down the right, uh, deep into the penalty area and his low cross was blocked by the shins of Taylor and it spins behind for a Leeds corner. Well, so this is how Leeds wanted to start the first half but Aston Villa did it to them. Um, they want to get on the front foot get the balls into Hernandez's feet he looked for Roberts on the right hand side saw Ailing overlapping looked for a cross but good defending from Villa Leeds attacking the cop end looking to get the advantage as early as possible in the second half and it's a corner for Leeds on the far side taken by Phillips Ailing was rising so too was Janssen it loops towards this near side and it's Berardi who will try and keep the ball in play appeals for handball as El Ghazi makes the challenge now Hernandez with a deeper ball in looking for Ailing, and it's nodded behind by Taylor again appeals for handball as it's spun off the body of the Villa left back and behind for a corner well it's ball from Hernandez off the left hand side in swinging looking for Ailing, who's got the height advantage over Neil Taylor there and he just seemed to get all over the shot he didn't really know he's where, who was around him where and what position to take up um, did it hit his hand on his hand we can't really tell because we've got no replays here but uh, he certainly got himself in an uncomfortable position an out swinging corner again from Phillips and it was Janssen challenging but again Villa clear El Mohamedi with the header Hernandez finding Roberts in space down the left driven low into the penalty area and it was missed completely at the near post by Janssen but leads here looking to keep Villa pinned in at the start of the second half 
Hernandez now with a low ball towards Bamford but he's beaten to it by Twan Zebe. but Villa quickly recover once again but here is Hernandez for Leeds and he slices it wide to the far side Aiden does well to recover and keep the ball in play Forshaw now well known to Dean Smith from their time at Brentford plays it wide to the far side and Alien the cross in flicked on by Bamford towards the far post and Steer comes out towards the edge of a six yard area and gathers ahead of Hernandez and he quickly clears downfield but Cooper strides across to get there before Codger and Leeds will look to maintain their strong start to the second half well this is how Leeds have started most, most of the games here at Ellen Road all season first half and second half get in the front foot get the crowd behind them ask questions in opposition and that's what they've done to Aston Villa so far just not got the end product Villa and Wien stood, uh, stood firm defending well with the, the back four trying to get now a few passes in to make sure that they can get a foothold and take the sting out of this uh, positive lead start into the second half El Mohamedy with a ball down the line on this near side but Leeds quickly win it back here is Mateus Click lovely reverse ball from him Forshaw in a central area right from it shot just wide and Adam Forshaw's long long wait for a goal almost came to an end there well we, we, he's had two opportunities in the first half not to uh, work the keeper as much like he'd like to do I think he said earlier he's three years since his last goal but Leeds worked the ball really well and he had a lot of time in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the goal 18 yards out went to sort of reverse it to Jed Steele's right hand uh, side of the goal just goes uh, past, the, past the post to the uh, unfortunate um, Adam Forshaw Grealish now looking to drive forward towards this near side and he's been fouled by Janssen Grealish bowled over 25 yards out right of centre going back to that challenge in the first half made by Cooper we were talking to the Leeds legend Eddie Gray at half time and uh, he thinks it was a naughty one from Cooper but, but looking at the replay again it's one of those ones where it's the follow through that caught Grealish rather than the initial challenge well we, we only saw it live didn't we so we thought it was a good challenge we didn't see the trading leg that you do see so many times if you've got the uh, opportunity to look at a replay and um, so, so Liam Cooper um, was strong in the challenge got the yellow card but Grealish does seem to go quite down quite easily and uh, every time he touches it you don't need us to tell the uh, to the listeners who's actually getting the ball because the, the boos will let you know who it is but it's a free kick which is slightly right of centre for Aston Villa Horahan and Grealish are over it and it's Grealish who curls it and Horahan with the left foot would have been the better option because it's high over the top yeah I would say it, it looked like he had no interest in it whatsoever Horahan and you're thinking ideally left foot he can go over the wall to the keeper's left and cross to the right and he scored some great free kicks in his time as a Barnsley player and as a Villa player so a little bit disappointed that he, he wasn't the one that uh, stepped up and, and tried to, uh, to take the free kick and this Conor Horahan's 100th league appearance for Villa and he has scored eight goals this season including one against Leeds in the corresponding game at Villa Park now click back towards Janssen again for Leeds and we've played six minutes in the second half at Ellen Road and it's nil-nil on the home of the EFL Talk Sport 2 League 1 action coming up at 3 o'clock Coventry against Shrewsbury with news of some big games in the Premier League with Sags on Sunday over on Talk Sport which is on the air now and plenty of commentaries coming up from the EFL this week Millwall Bristol City on Tuesday here on Talk Sport 2 Swansea Derby on Wednesday two games which are pivotal in the race for the final playoff place both these teams will be involved in the postseason and every single playoff game will be live across the Talk Sport network including the finals weekend which comes up at the end of May now click inside the centre circle for Leeds square to Forshaw Forshaw with a long raking ball right footed wide to the far side and Ailey Roberts in support but it's back in field towards Bamford who is some way from the penalty area Bamford again finding click Phillips is square of him click was looking for options arms outstretched and eventually 
It's the yellow booted Ailing who takes over. Hernandez now in the central position, wide towards the right hand side, and Roberts cuts it back towards Bamford. Can he turn and shoot? No, he can't because McGinn comes in with a challenge, and Al Ghazi with a very stylish run forward again, evading both Phillips and Ailing, but he can't find Kodja to the left hand side. But it breaks back into the path of Grealish, you can tell due to the booze. Now down the right hand side, it's Andre Green. El Mohamedi on the overlap here for Villa. Can he deliver the cross into the penalty? area, it falls to Codger, right foot shot from him, it's over the top 10 yards out, and Jonathan Codger falls to the turf in mock despair because he really should have scored there Yeah, great play from uh, from Villa, brought quickly Grealish into Green, and then he's got sort of the overlapping of uh, El Mohamedi who gets to the byline, pulls it back, Codger takes a great first touch, slightly behind him on the half turn, looks to hit the target goes over the bar, but that was a better opportunity from Villa, they've, they've had to whistle stand a lot of uh, Leeds pressure so far but they've got quality players that can hit teams on the counter attack and um, Codger will be disappointed that he's not managed to hit the target there eight and a half minutes played in the second half it is Leeds United nil Aston Villa nil as Tyler Roberts comes forward now for Leeds a player who has gone 22 games without a league goal back in field towards Hernandez now click inside the penalty area Twanzebe forces in wide but Roberts with a low shot which is eventually blocked by Mings right in front of the goalkeeper and El Ghazi will hack clear and Kodja rather isolated on the halfway line can't win it back and the Leeds crowd turn up the volume as Janssen brings it forward now wide towards the far side and Ailing Roberts coming short and with Roberts playing on the right hand side now and Hernandez on the left there is the ability to come in field more and fasten more shots in for Leeds as Click with a high cross into the penalty area El Mohamedi very very calm defending to stand there and chest it down into the body of Jed Steer yeah really good composed player there from El Hamadi he sort of used his experience realised there was nobody around him chest it back to Jed Steer and just take the sting out of the game but, but Leeds have certainly been the better team the, the, uh, they've asking questions they're just not having enough bodies into the box at time. You look at Banford, he, he sort of drifts in and around positions where he spoke about in commentary in the first half where he's doing the role of a number 10 where he could do with him being the number 9 in around the 6-yard box when balls are fired across the box or, or uh, fizzed across. You're listening to Leeds against Villa on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. Ailing releasing Roberts inside the penalty area who spins and crosses high to the far post and Mohamedi clears. Barani was thinking about the shot but it's McGinn who robs him and McGinn now will look to lead the breakaway now. He's got El Ghazi to the left and also Kodjic to the right but he goes back towards Grealish. Now it's wide towards El Ghazi but it's a poor ball from Grealish. Cut out quickly by Ailing. Roberts now infield towards Hernandez and the game beginning to stretch out as Berardi on this left hand side comes in field to find Forshaw midway inside the Villa half. Forshaw looks for options ahead of him and instead goes wide to the right hand side and Ailing. Bamford and Roberts wait inside the penalty area now joined by Forshaw but here is Hernandez with a right footed shot and it whizzes over the crossbar. Well, I think that's what you see from Hernandez when he plays on the left-hand side. He drifts into the central areas, looks to get it into his feet, gets it out of his feet. Unfortunately, he just doesn't quite get his head over the ball and keeps it to, to try and keep it down. Sails over Jed Steers, uh, go, uh, over the crossbar. Wasn't threatened by it, but again, leads on the front foot. Jack Grealish gives it away a little bit too cheaply when he, he should have made it a, a better pass because he wasn't under any pressure. But Leeds are the ones who are asking the questions at the moment. And Jed Steer, who could be promoted with two clubs this season, having spent the first half of the campaign on loan at Charlton, clears downfield. But it will quickly come back and there's been more bite from Leeds in the second half so far. 56 and a half minutes played and it's still goalless here. And the clock is also ticking down for Sheffield United. If Leeds don't win this game, their promotion to the Premier League is signed and sealed. I wonder if Jed Steer's entitled to two lots of bonuses, that'd be nice. Yeah, it? well, it probably should be. I'm not sure how that works, to be it. honest. Well, you would know, obviously. <laughs> Kodja is now being caught on halfway, and Bielsa again goes towards the fourth official. And Bielsa's already on a yellow card, so he sends one of his assistants to do the whingy on his behalf. Yeah, he just... Uh, He'll cover some distance in that dugout, won't he? He's constantly walking if across the head down. He's got his 10,000 steps already yeah. in this game. Now to Anzebe. 
wide to the far side and Horahan for Villa and it's a good ball to pick out the Welshman Taylor infield again towards Grealish and the Leeds crowd still remember to boo him now El Mohamedy Leicester City have taken the lead against Arsenal Yuri Tielemans with the opening goal on 59 minutes so it seems at the moment nobody wants to finish uh, in fourth place Arsenal's away form has been dreadful hasn't it it's, uh, for a team that are looking to push for the top four uh, and other teams as well trying to secure into the position in the Champions League positions nobody's actually running away with it and grasping that opportunity well Stuart Atwell the referee here today was in charge of Arsenal's defeat at Wolves on Wednesday he's now back on the Premier League list and this is a rare visit down to the Championship for him the referee who was maybe given too much too young as a referee t Premier League referee when he possibly wasn't ready as Kodja looks to break on the far side the left and it's challenged by Ealing behind for a corner well, all the best Jack Grealish going over to that far side in, in front of uh, a very vocal Leeds fearful I don't think it's his fault well, at times that he's been clattered around and yeah he's been and a meal of couple he, of things. he's had far worse this season yeah no I get that yeah and that's a dreadful situation to be involved in 59 minutes play Grealish over the corner whipped in towards the near post El Mohamedy will try and flick it on but he's done well to recover and play it square to Horahan Horahan's low left footed shot which was blocked very well by Forshaw because he could see that Horahan was going to let fly and he made up the ground really well now Mings nods it down for Horahan on this near side back towards Mings again who tries to bob and weave towards the penalty area challenged by Forshaw and it's a throw in for Villa now Green there's a heavy challenge between Green and Ailing on this near side Ailing, in fact it's Forshaw and he stayed down but the referee was happy for play to continue until Horahan knocks it out of play in, in, he's in a bit of pain he's Adam Forshaw by the looks of this but when you just look at the live uh, situation that we've got it looks like they've both gone for the ball and whether it's a clash of knees I don't think it's gone over the top or anything like that they can be the real sore ones if it's knee to knee um, and I think it's just a mistimed follow through that has caught him there I don't think it's anything malicious over the top of the ball um, but there seems to be a lot going off both benches that's for sure yeah it's a difficult game for Darren England the fourth official and I think at the moment more is coming from the lead side than the Villa side but John Terry is also there alongside Dean Smith at the moment just trying to sort a few things out and rather to break in play let's remind you that Talk Sport 2 supports the work of Prostate Cancer UK remember in the time it takes to play a game of football two men in the UK will die of prostate cancer to find out more and how you can help visit prostatecanceruk.org slash football just touching on the prostate stuff there I've done a lot of work for them over the last few years and uh, got a lovely text from a bloke um, in the last few days that when I was doing my work at, uh, for prostate at Preston uh, he went for a random checkup, found he had prostate cancer and because uh, of the awareness he got, he got it early enough to remove it and uh, he keeps sending me a text every year to say how thankful he is for me raising his awareness which is uh, what it's all about for everybody so uh, lovely, lovely night well, that's lovely fantastic and that say. really just bears out what we're trying to do and what we're trying to say without a shadow of doubt well Leeds will give the ball back to Villa Click just booms it long into the Villa half after Horahan played it out For sure is back on his feet and the game will resume 61 minutes played, nil-nil so Villa's winning streak is also at risk of ending here and they have Norwich at home on the final day and Norwich will go to Villa Park needing a point for the title Twanzebe challenged by Bamford and it will be a free kick for Villa and as a player and a manager who's got promotion does it really matter if you win the league or not or are you just bothered about getting up well first and foremost just get up regardless where you finish if it's first second or third just achieve the target that you wanted to achieve in the summer but I think it's always that just icing on the cake for any football club that you uh, that you can manage to win it if you finish second you'll say I'm not too bothered like we did when we were at Leeds we finished second you weren't too bothered let Norwich win it and uh, take the trophy if you win it you'll go well with champions in something to look back on so um, 
but the bigger picture is a promotion especially to the Premier League it's a massive uh, achievement for any club that managed to achieve it Hurahan will take the free kick I think the yellow card was out for click there as Hurahan plays it short towards McGinn who spins on the edge of the penalty area slides it through towards Kodja but he can't turn and get the shot in and Leeds will eventually clear now Phillips there's a Villa player down inside the Leeds penalty area Jonathan Kodja but Leeds will play on here is Ailing now forward towards Roberts Mings though steps in and makes the challenge and fouls him and it will be a free kick here to Leeds on the right hand side and Villa are complaining that Leeds did not knock the ball out of play with Kodja at the moment motionless inside their penalty area <laughs> Dean Smith is now having words with Bielsa yeah because John Terry was tied to the Leeds bench Dean Smith has just come over to have a chat as well nothing malicious from Dean but I think it's one of them real grey situations grey areas that with it not being a head injury you don't have to kick the ball out but Aston Villa did it prior to Adam Forshaw's uh, injury wasn't a head injury but they played it out give the ball back maybe Lee should have done the same uh, and that's I think that's what uh, got the backs up of the Aston Villa staff but it is a grey area because some people use it to the advantage of just going down to try and take the sting out of the game free kick taken by Phillips high into the penalty area Janssen challenging but Twanzebe with an excellent header away and Cooper allows the ball to drift behind and it will be a corner for Leeds on this near side there left Izzy Brown among those warming up for Leeds at the moment along with Jack Clark the youngster who has really come to prominence this season and also scored in the win at Villa Park back in December Phillips will look to take the corner there will be movement on the Villa bench very shortly as well Leeds have made two changes at half time Phillips will take the corner and it's an in-swinger high to the far post Mings again rising and he was clattered there after the fact by Janssen who has also gone down and it's, it's a free kick yeah look two committed people going for the ball you've got Mings looking to defend it Janssen looking to attack it it's a great ball into the six yard area from uh, Calvin Phillips Mings does what you want your centre half to do and that's to go and win the ball Janssen's followed through and nothing just got in running to the back of him collision free kick move on Leeds United nil Aston Villa nil on a ground where Villa have not won since the year 2000 when Gareth Southgate was amongst their goal scorers and this was one of his lucky grounds didn't score too many but scored a few here against Leeds I think Gareth will remember many of his all of his goals people, people he scored himself. two I think what his career <laughs> no, he, no he, he scored two here in one game oh wow I was talking to him before England played here last year Green with a high ball into the penalty area for Villa Taylor will try and recover he's done well to jab it wide to the far side El Ghazi will gather the Leeds crowd and Ailing claim that it was carried over the byline but the referee is happy for play to continue here is Grealish again on the far side now El Ghazi He's a tricky customer and he delivers a left footed cross very deep though beyond the gin at the far post who will scamper to try and keep the ball in play and the challenge comes in from Berardi and it's a throw into Villa in front of their supporters on this near side down their right with 66 minutes played nil nil at Ellen Road on Talk Sport 2 the home of the EFL Green looks to work it through towards McGinn and now Green with a cross high into the penalty area Casilla just has to watch it and in the end palm the ball over the top for a corner yeah we've not seen much of Andre Green from the first from the first 20 minutes where he's quite dominant gets to the byline stands it up and it's one of them for Casilla that if he decides to let it uh, go by might hit the crossbar and drop down a bit like Jordan Pickford did early in the season in the, um, the Merseyside derby so he decided just to palm it out behind for a corner which Greenish will take looking for the in-swinger of, of Mings and, uh, and the rest of the big Aston Villa back defenders well they play it short in the end to McGinn and McGinn on the far side does well to ride the challenge of Click crossing into the penalty area volley clear at the near post by four short Albert Adoma will be on shortly for Aston Villa and of course he can play on either side and maybe Andre Green is the player they will bring off and possibly pull El Ghazi towards the right which is a position where he may be more comfortable and certainly where he scored plenty of his goals 
featuring for Ajax in the Eredivisie before moving on to Lille. Now Roberts for Leeds on this near side, their left, midway through the second half at Ellen Road. And it's still goalless here, so Sheffield United are edging towards confirmation of promotion to the Premier League. And the top two could be sorted out here today. Now Bamford turns neatly away from McGinn and slides it wide to this near side, the left, and Roberts. He's got support from Berardi on the outside, but Roberts may look to go himself, drives in the cross. It's blocked by El Mohamedi, who then recovers to just scrape it out of play on this near side, and it will be a throw into Leeds, but not before the change, and it is Andre Green, who's replaced by Albert Adoma. Yeah, as I said uh, a couple of minutes ago, he's, uh, he had a bright start that we were getting the ball out to Andre Green, the last bit of action there, he got to the byline, stood it up for Codger, trying to get the bar far post for Domo, you've He's uh, got fantastic quality, good pace, got an eye for a goal as well and has been a, a real big player for Aston Villa over the last few years. So another tough test for Berardi coming on uh, with Adoma coming on against him. And at the moment, Adoma will operate down the right-hand side. He was one of Villa's leading goal scorers last season with 15 goals but scored only three after December and has three in the current campaign as well. Now click, 25 yards out, slides it in towards Hernandez on the edge of the area, back towards Hernandez again, and it's looped wide to the far side, and Ailing. it's all very congested for Leeds, but it breaks to Forshaw, who almost finds Bamford inside the area, but Mings with the first touch and Twanzebi with the second. Yeah, looking for them, little given goes in around the 18-yard post, little few passes, then Bamford looking to get off the shoulder of Mings, Forshaw just couldn't quite get it through to him, Mings again defended well. 69 minutes played, 0-0, leads against Aston Villa on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football, providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. Mings again, outwitting Click on the edge of the penalty area, and at times Bamford has looked rather isolated, and as you keep saying, maybe he's a number 10, even though he's been used as the number nine but that's the system that Bielsa likes to play yeah and look they've got another centre forward on the books at the moment that is fit you've got uh, Roof that has come back from injury the last three or four games and has picked up a hip injury in uh, training I think um, and it'd be vital for Leeds to have Roof back going into the playoff two semi-final games now to Anzebe finding Kodja on the edge of the penalty area and it's back again towards McGinn who maybe thinks about the shot but he crosses high to the far post it's gathered by El Ghazi can he pick out support he's found Taylor with the shot and it's a great challenge from Pontus Janssen to block the effort and it loops high and behind for a corner yeah good play from Villa Taylor pumping forward from the left back situation but Janssen read it very quickly got out and got the block that's what you want your centre backs to do to get out there put the bodies on the line looks like he's picked up a little knock from in it's the last last probably the last thing that Leeds could do with uh, is uh, one of the centre backs going off injured but very quickly out to him and uh, got a brave block well, they don't have another defender on the bench. Shackleton can probably play it right back, yeah. and uh, Ealing would go into the centre-back decision. And he's another player who has been given opportunities due to injuries, but it's looking rather thin. The corner high into the penalty area, Mings rising but can't get the touch, Hurahan will try and keep the ball in play, and it does so. On this near side, Hurahan's delivery into the near post, and it's skipped away by Leeds initially then it falls to a Doma with a shot on the turn and it's nearer the corner flag than the goal well it looked like it was a miscued cross to be fair to start with but then uh, El, El Harmadi has gone across the near post and if anything you're expecting to get some sort of contact on it it misses it all together it drops to a lead shirt and managed to get the clearance but a uh, little bit scrappy play but, but ultimately Villa have been the ones that have got back into the game where Leeds started the second half really brightly on the front foot asking questions they've now found a bit more of a foothold in the game and, and taking the game to Leeds well if it stays like this as well Villa will finish fifth in the table and they will go to West Brom in the second leg of the playoff semi-final as things stand with West Brom four points clear of them as Click comes forward now for Leeds down the left-hand side cuts in field Click with a low shot brilliant goal Mateus Click scores and then he runs straight into Horahan and there is a brawl in the aftermath of the goal but the goal will stand and players from both sides are grappling inside the penalty area stewards are also coming onto the field and the opening 
opening goal is followed by real acrimony inside the Villa penalty area. Horahan squared up to click, smoke bombs are going off as well. And although Leeds have scored, the celebrations quickly turned to a brawl inside the penalty area. But it's Leeds United 1, Aston Villa 0. Well, it's hard to get a focus on what's going on because... Uh, Codger's gone down injured Leeds United players Aston Villa players stopped because they thought they were going to kick the ball out and it's still Collins continuing still down off. there Mings is now squaring up to Phillips Bamford has gone down as he grappled with Juan Zebe and there is absolute chaos out there at the moment and the stewards are coming onto the field as well to try and help out Stuart Atwell the referee he could send off half a dozen here this is not what we want to see from both sets of players the benches are both at each other I think Aston Villa were upset that they're not taking the ball out but again it isn't a head injury Click has gone through then there's a reaction after the goal and even now there's still altercations going around players need to grow up get away from the situation let the referee deal with it because it's not something we need to be well, seeing well there are security staff all around the technical areas Horahan was annoyed that Click played on even though there was a Villa player down inside the centre circle and Click slid in the opening goal and then it all kicked off Stuart Atwell is now talking to his assistant referee on this near side and tempers are still fraying Conor Horahan is gesticulating towards a number of Leeds players and Tyro Mings is trying to pull him away and calm him down and there are players on both sides grouping around the technical area and what on earth is Stuart Atwell going to do here well, there, there was a red card El Ghazi. and it's El Ghazi who has been sent off he is now trying to sort out the aftermath as far as Leeds United are concerned and this could have real repercussions for Anwar El Ghazi as far as the playoffs are concerned there are security staff all around the two benches as well John Terry is trying to calm things down and Stuart Atwell having sent off El Ghazi is now walking across towards the Leeds players what on earth is he going to do here a yellow card is out for Horahan now Atwell is coming across towards Bamford and it's a yellow card for him as well so two yellows and a red Codger is now coming across to this near side having received treatment and I've never seen anything like that in a game of football before a goal scored and then absolute mayhem as you said Nigel absolute mayhem it's been building up hasn't it over the course of the game little niggles going off El Ghazi I think was involved in an incident and, and, and then how he's managed to pick out other people off the back of that I would be very surprised if there isn't going to be any other respective ad, ad, um, action done after the game because I've seen one or two things go off there Banford I think was lucky that because I think he threw somebody to the ground around somebody's neck he has only got a yellow card which will mean that he can't have anything done for him in terms of re retrospective action um, all the players are involved it it wouldn't surprise me if there's going to be um, problems well are, are Leeds going to allow Villa to score an uncontested goal here Adobo was trying to do that John Terry and, Bielsa and now took John Terry well is squaring up to Bielsa and there are security staff from all over the technical area here John Terry is being calmed down Dean Smith is standing there talking to Richard O'Kelly Bielsa is trying to keep calm as well a couple of his coaches are telling the Villa players to get away now are Villa going to be allowed an uncontested goal here? <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue, Nigel. But I would what, be very surprised what if that gone happens. over the last five minutes. You haven't got a clue what has gone off. What could happen? I, I doesn't look like they're going to let them go through and score. I don't I think people like Cooper are looking to the bench. Are they giving the opportunity to do it? Are they going to? Looks like they're going to do it. I think they're going to allow them to go from the touch from the kickoff to go through and score. Wow. Players are looking to the Leeds United bench to say, are we allowing him to do it? Bielsa looks like well, he's letting him do it. They have kicked off. Adoma is going through with El Mohamedi. Janssen then makes the challenge, but Adoma puts the ball into the net, and Aston Villa have scored an uncontested goal. 
and I've never seen that happen before either. Now Janssen is squaring up to Adoma and Mings, and Leeds United have allowed Aston Villa to score the equalising goal. Clearly, Bielsa believed that play should have been stopped before Click went through to score, and now Janssen is arguing with his teammates. He is saying, why on earth have we done that? But Aston Villa have been gifted the equalising goal. Well, I have never witnessed anything like this in the football match that for 32 years since I've been involved in professional football. You've been coming in for, for many, many years. I'm not sure you will have done as well. Everybody didn't have a clue that they were going to get the signal from the bench to allow them go through and score. Janssen took it upon himself to try and stop them from doing it. Well, now Bielsa looks absolutely livid. He is waving his arms around. So who on earth made I think, that decision? I think he's made the decision and he's probably having a go at Janssen for maybe not for maybe be making the attempt to, to stop them from doing it. Now who, Bielsa who is pointing at Darren England, the fourth official. In the midst of all of this, Codger has gone off. And of course Villa, well they're down to nine players at the moment because they've not made the change and Yedinat will be coming on shortly. Well that, in a way that makes a mockery of the goal because if Leeds have felt that they need to give them the goal back, then El Ghazi has been sent off for something that shouldn't have really happened in the first place in terms of the goal being given. He gets involved in all the fracas that's been going off. He's going to suffer for a three-match ban He's probably. He's out of the playoff semi-finals, if, if yeah, that stands. Exactly. And here is Roberts now with a shot. Well, it is 1-1 with 12 minutes to play. Mateus Click giving Leeds the opening goal after Kodja was lying injured inside the centre circle. Then we had absolute mayhem, Kodja sent off, Bamford and Horahan booked, and Leeds have allowed Aston Villa to score an uncontested goal, Albert Adoma walking the ball in, although Pontus Janssen tried to stop that, you could not make it up. If, if you're not in front of a TV screen or you're actually not here at Ellen Road, you would not believe, would you Nigel, that what we've just witnessed incredible. and what we've seen. It's an unbelievable experience. And, and because of that uncontested goal, Sheffield United are now heading to the, to the <laughs> Premier League. <laughs> Oh dear. Unbelievable. Who said it was going to be the nice easy afternoon where it's going to be nothing to play for? Wow. Well, Al Ghazi now, if he gets a three game ban, yeah. he's done. All day. Oh. Get to the and now, a yellow there's card. a shocking challenge from McGinn, and it's another yellow card on four short. Well, Stuart Atwell has been involved in a couple of bizarre games throughout his career remember the ghost goal yeah. scored by Reading at Watford that was back in 2008 now he's been involved in a game in which we've had an uncontested goal and he's, he's been under pressure a lot for some of the decisions all afternoon but the one thing that both sets supporters of uh, sets of players got to remember a suspension like we talking about El Ghazi will rule them out the semi-finals don't be doing anything stupid don't be getting another yellow card if you're already on one don't be getting a straight red because you're going to be detrimental to your team for the playoffs well it's 1-1 one -one as Ailing plays the ball into I still cannot believe what we've seen no. here here is Roberts now with a cross into the penalty area headed away by Twan Zabe and then it's met by Horahan who I think is very lucky to still be on the field and click fires the ball in and it is saved by Steer right down the throat well it'd be one of them to pick the bones out of it after the game who's done what who hasn't done what what uh, repercussions are going to be happen or not happen uh, but players have got to play with the head and, uh, as well as the heart make sure that you're not doing something stupid that'll cost your football club for the next few games because if you do that then it's uh, it's an absolutely stupid thing to ha could happen Amina Yedinak has come on and is now playing at centre forward just right. to uh, <laughs> increase the, uh, the, uh, the feeling of well, I bet you that's the first time he's played as a centre forward. Well, he's yeah, not it? scored since the playoff semi final against Borough last season. Penalty, was it? No, it was a <laughs> header. But, wow. Well, it was nine if minutes I wasn't, left. If I wasn't commentating, I would be speechless. Yeah. 1 1. Nine minutes to go. How much of injury time? About the same again. Wow. If not more. There were two, two minutes at least between the red card and the, and the, the equalising goal. Here is Hernandez threading it through towards Bamford who tries to drag back on the edge of the penalty area and El Mohamedy clears and in many ways I've got sympathy there for Stuart Atwell because <laughs> you have to play 
to the letter of the law and the letter of the law says you play on yeah play to the referee's whistle he he didn't deem it as a, a worthwhile stoppage in the game so for Aston Villa were were to blame that they didn't that they switched off Leeds United was certainly entitled to do what they did whether it was right or wrong in terms of the morality of the of the game but you don't switch off and then we have a whole of mayhem that breaks out yellow cards, red cards well now the ball is played in by Roberts and it goes right through the six yard area and it's wide and well if Bielsa said let them score a goal well that that, that does him a good deal of credit in the situation well it does because he uh, he seems when you listen to his interviews he seems very uh, um, correct in his morals of the game and how it should be played uh, and, and in instances never re blames referees for uh, penalty decisions or anything like that but then obviously if he's decided on that then Janssen was wrong in these opportunities <laughs> to try and stop him from going through but there's so many people didn't have a clue what was going off and I'm pretty sure that the FA will be uh, looking at this incident and just uh, being busy, very busy tomorrow morning well it depends what was in the referee's report or what goes into the referee's report now Bamford grappling with Twanzebe on this near side within the laws of the game and El Mohamedy clears downfield you've got Mile Yedinak now playing at centre forward for Aston Villa which just tells you what on earth is going on here that the game has just become completely unhinged well, and hopefully five minutes between the two goals that means we'll have at least five minutes of added time plus another stoppage time as well that you normally get in a game hopefully we'd now talk about the game because up to then there was, it wasn't a bad game was it? no but that is going to be overshadowed oh, without by what happened now. there I mean your thoughts go back to the um, the Sheffield United Arsenal FA Cup time yeah. you know, I mean, that was replayed wasn't it? 36,786 is the crowd here as Berardi just missed controls on this near side and it will be a throw-in to Aston Villa on Talk Sport 2 we have six minutes to play on a truly bizarre afternoon in the championship Leeds scoring the opening goal with an Aston Villa player down injured then Anwar Al Ghazi was sent off in the aftermath and Leeds then allowed, well, most of the Leeds team then allowed Aston Villa to score the equalising goal. And it will be interesting to see from Hergaz's point of view has he actually done anything wrong? Has, has anybody gone down? I can't actually once? see what he did. No, I will, because there was that many bodies in a round I mean, the player who, who created the initial problem and then Mings also seemed to be very angry indeed yeah whether players are making more of a meal of it have they gone down needlessly when they've not had I to mean, do he could have done something in the midst of that and, and we've you know, not seen it or the assistants were as a player right, made um, a meal of a situation where he's gone down or not gone down in terms of has he been punched not punched there'll be so much uh, footage that'll be used after the match from, from uh, the well our colleagues from <laughs> television are just down the gantry from us and I'll be uh, popping down there at the end of the game to actually see what they saw as well because it might need to be multi-camera footage to sort out the aftermath of that goal here is Yedinat and it's headed away by Phillips on this near side and we have five minutes to play Leeds United one Aston Villa one Sheffield United are five minutes away from the Premier League or confirmation <laughs> of their return to the Premier League and they will have got there with an uncontested goal and it'd be more than five minutes thought we were about yeah, that night about 15 <laughs> minutes probably here is McGinn now looking to drive forward for Aston Villa plays it wide towards the far side and Taylor and the crowd now almost subdued I think they've almost done themselves in collectively in the aftermath of those two goals here is Grealish now on the far side he nudges over Ailing and Grealish will be penalised and that's a free kick <laughs> Ironic cheers, Jack Grealish giving away a free kick when he's been on the uh, the end of things and the brunt of so many challenges. Uh, so I think everybody will be time to take a bit of a breather, a bit of a breath and just come up and enjoy hopefully the last five minutes of normal time and whatever's to be played in injury time. A donut charging down the clearance from Berardi. And you look at the Leeds bench and they don't really have any other attacking options of course Codger's gone off injured but Abrahams is currently injured and there's no Keenan Davis in the team today so they're just having to press Yedinak into service here now Roberts high ball to the far post just beyond Bamford and that will go behind for a goal kick to Aston Villa 
Mateus Click scoring on 72 minutes. El Ghazi was sent off on 75 minutes. And then Odoma equalising on 77 minutes. And there was no football at all between the two goals, which just tells you something of the chaos we had here. Well, when you look at what's gone off, Kodjo has actually had to go off for the, the challenge in yeah. the first place. So, it, But it wasn't a head injury, so... Uh, like we keep saying people are going to have to pick the bones out of what went off in that crazy period of time now Roberts coming forward for Leeds on this near side in towards Foreshaw the challenge comes in from Hurahan and Berardi's cross high towards the far post Ailing with a looping header and it's over the top yeah, Leeds have been a dominant team Aston Villa uh, even before the, the goal weren't really asking too many questions of the Leeds back four Leeds have been on the front foot Looks like Villa will be just trying to see the game out. Yedinat playing up front, taking the point and moving on. Looks like Glenn Whelan will be coming on. Maybe the, for Conor Hurain, who's just getting himself in a couple of incidents that he doesn't need to get involved in. McGinn as well, he's been in around it. Some of these players are on a knife edge that they don't need to do something stupid to... Maybe you'll play off the Edinac up front. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be... Uh, not too many goals in them two, is there? No, not with, really. With a distinguished career of both players. No, I mean... But goal scoring certainly hasn't been something that... Well, Yedinac uh, now leaves something on Berardi. And the referee last play to go on as Yedinac was chasing towards the corner flag on this near side. And it was an interesting reaction from the Villa fans when the goal went in. They weren't really sure what to do, whether to cheer, to boo or just to actually wonder what had gone on I think. Oh, oh about the player celebrating does he celebrate well, after Adoma, scoring I don't look embarrassed to score um, well here is Phillips and we have 90 seconds to play Hernandez into the penalty area Roberts now controls down the left hand side he's got the opportunity to drive in field and he goes for the curler and Mings missed it at the far post so did Steer and it was just wide oh, great ball in Looking at Forshaw again, breaking into the box. He got Mings putting his body on the line. He's ended up in the goal, holding his head. Forshaw looking to get in the far post, and uh, he, he couldn't get anywhere near it. But it was a great in swinging ball from Tyler Roberts off the left hand side. Stairs now gone down injured as well. Mings is stretching his calf. Well, well, I've never seen a game like this with, in all my time of being involved in professional football. So many things going off. People going at Jed Steer now. Looks like he's hobbling along. The sub goalkeeper will he, he might have to go and get ready. It's really she was coming on. It's coming on. Morahan. So Glenn Whelan will come on. I think that's probably sensible from Dean Smith. Take off a player that is going to get a lot of stick. He's your most influential player. Don't give him anybody any opportunity to uh, uh, to go and get a, a yellow card or a red card or anything like that because the last thing Aston Villa need is, uh, is Jack Grealish to uh, miss him for a playoff semi-final. Well, Steer is hobbling around his six-yard area. Matias Sarkic, the young Montenegrin, is the backup goalkeeper. And there will be seven added minutes at the end of this game. I'm surprised oh, it's thought, only seven yeah I thought there'd be more than that to be fair normally it's a standard four minutes isn't it and as well as the, the five minutes uh, between two goals anyway let's try and enjoy the last uh, seven minutes if we can well it is a game which I'm sure the FA will be having a look at in the aftermath as well because Stuart Atwell simply cannot have seen everything which happened in the aftermath of the Leeds goal without a shadow of doubt and then you've got the fourth official as making decisions and he's on the opposite side well, he to where it all to happened he was trying to keep the two benches apart then all the security dived in to try and sort it out it was like a nightclub at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> down there you, is that what you are doing Nigel is it two o'clock <laughs> no, they are now open until later than that <laughs> <laughs> allegedly anyway Alleg yeah I wouldn't know your kids are coming back from nightclubs at that time <laughs> It was an opportunity now for Hernandez to try and cross. He's found Bamford inside the penalty, a right-hand side, in towards Roberts, but a great challenge, though, from Twan Zabe. Ready put his head in there where it hurts to concede the corner. He's affected the game as Roberts since he's come on. I think he's been bright. He is going off here. Yeah. He can't continue, I don't think, the goalkeeper. So Matija Sarkic could be the fifth different Aston Villa <laughs> goalkeeper to play in the Championship this season. He's hobbling around. I don't think the, is the goalkeeper ready to come on. There's a physio going on. Well, they've still got one change available. Well, Steer is going to carry on. 
Phillips with the corner, high into the penalty area. It drops at the feet of Roberts at the far post. Low shot, cleared off the line by Mings. Ailing with the effort, that's blocked. Ailing with the acrobatic overhead kick. It's still blocked and it's still not clear. Here is Roberts now, left-hand side of the penalty area. Low towards Hernandez again. Slid in towards Janssen. Janssen can't get the shot in and Berardi's effort is blocked by Whelan. Stairs going to go off. He couldn't get anywhere near that now. He's going down injured again. I tell you what, be we'll, another break here. I tell you what, we'll be interested in Nigel if Leeds play Villa in the semi-final. Villa Park will be rocking well, and Ellen I Road will be rocking. I don't think they will. The way it's looking now, it will be Villa against West Brom wow. in the semi-final with the first leg at Villa Park on the the Saturday, basically a week on Saturday. That'll be some cracking atmosphere at Villa Park, a West Midlands derby, yeah, because they will be four points behind. West Brom with a game to play if they don't win this one. Right, and then Leeds will uh, finish third. Leeds will play. Well, it could be could be any spy game we visited yeah. against Derby. <laughs> so many sort of. Uh, it's not going to be dull. Whatever happens. No, that exactly. We always know that the playoffs has been a, a fantastic introduction to keep the season alive, and and it has, and it's going to be an entertaining rest of the season. Who's going to be the team that are going to? Uh, get promoted who's going to be um, going in with a confidence going in with a belief um, it, it does it makes it been a fantastic invention yeah and you've seen both sides of the coin of course yeah I've been involved in nine playoff situations semi-finals I've lost a couple I've lost a couple as a player one at Wembley uh, as a player twice three as a manager but also lost in the semi-finals as well as a manager so it is it's, uh, I was here the night you lost to Millwall yeah that was a situation where we lost down at um, uh, the Den uh, got back to Ellen Road got back into the game and the place was rocking and then Jimmy Abdu scored and uh, v Millwall went to the final and I think they played Scunthorpe and I think, I think Scunthorpe went up by the playoffs that year here is Forshaw High cross into the penalty area and Steer is back on his feet <laughs> and looking at the bench there's no movement Leeds, of course, facing ten men here with Al Ghazi dismissed in the aftermath of the click goal. Now Hernandez. In towards Janssen, laid off to the right-hand side and Taylor losing out to Roberts. Two Welsh internationals there. And here's an opportunity for Ailing to try and cross the ball in. He's gone back towards Mateus Click. Click now finding Ailing again. Low into the penalty. Yeah, the shot from Hernandez beaten away by Steer. Well, if he's injured, he did wonderfully well there to make the save. Now Roberts with the cross into the penalty area. Headed away by Adoma. Forshaw recovers it. Back towards Cooper. Cooper infield now towards Phillips. Leeds piling on the pressure. We've played four minutes of added time at the end of this game. Looking to pick up a victory to give them some sort of form. More confidence heading into the playoffs. Now Hernandez, wide to this near side, appeals for handball as it strikes him again. But it's Berardi who drives it low, blocked by Twan Zabe, and Horahan will hook it clear. Now Cooper again for Leeds, and he's forced all the way back towards Kiko Casillas. Well, to say that Jed Steers had the, the, the uh, physio on a couple of times, what a save that is. Leeds asking questions, they've got body forward, Villa can't get out, they've got five at the back, they've got nobody up front. Now Ailing coming square towards Hernandez, a clouds and blue wall ahead of him, but he's picked out run of clicks, slid in low towards the edge of the six-yard area. And it's Mings who challenges, and Mings has now pulled up injured as well. I think he's got a bit of cramp and he's been outstanding to be fair but it's the backs against the wall for Villa down to the 10 men and, and Leeds asking questions probing but at this moment Villa are standing standing firm but Leeds faithful trying to get behind him to try and get this winning goal throwing on the far side taken quickly by Ailing. now Roberts picks out click again Hernandez it is all leads at the end of this game. Ailing down the right-hand side, crossing into the penalty area. Headed away by Adoma. As far as Hernandez, who finds Cooper. Every outfield player is inside the Villa half at the moment. Most of them inside the Villa penalty area. Cooper slides it wide to this near side, but it's cleared away by El Mohamedi. And Villa could break it. 
it's with McGinn Adoma the only player inside and McGinn sensibly invites the challenge and wins a throw into Villa on this near side as we tick towards the sixth minute of added time yeah good play by McGinn he knew he hadn't got the legs to carry himself forward decided to slow down encourage their four shot to come across and make a challenge El Hamadid coming across for the throw and not in a great rush Villa will be looking just to kill the game off and, and uh, they'll be happy to take the 1-1 one, one, move into the play into the game next weekend and then the playoffs the weekend after now an opportunity for Adoma to try and play in Whelan but it's given away and it's a throw in and we have 30 seconds of the minimum seven minutes left but I'm sure we will have a bit of extra time as the clearance from Casilla only finds Horahan who has it for Villa now down the left hand side and he's heading towards the corner flag they're here to take the draw now and he's lost out to Hernandez and the final touch was off Horahan and it's a throw in and Leeds here pushing hard for the winning goal Hernandez infield towards Forshaw Sheffield United on the brink of the Premier League Forshaw wide towards this near side and Berardi Bamford makes the run down the centre but the ball from Berardi was behind Roberts and it's going to be a throw into Villa just, just looking at the table there, Nigel. That uh, if uh, if Leeds manage, if Leeds lose next week at Norwich, West Brom win, and there's a three-goal swing, then West Brom could actually finish third still. Well, the full-time whistle has gone, and it's congratulations to Sheffield United because their promotion to the Premier League is now confirmed following this 1-1 draw here at Ellen Road a game which is guaranteed to grab the headlines thanks to its chaotic finish Matthias Click scoring the opening goal for Leeds while Jonathan Codger was lying injured inside the centre circle that sparked complete mayhem inside the Aston Villa penalty area and while Al Ghazi was sent off Patrick Banford and Conor Horahan were both booked and in the aftermath Marcelo Bielsa clearly told the Leeds players to allow Aston Villa to score an uncontested goal although as Albert Adoma went through to score it Pontus Janssen clearly disagreed and he tried to stop him that created more problems within the Leeds United <coughs> team and at the end of it it is finished Leeds United won Aston Villa won but Simon Grayson we have not heard the last of that we certainly haven't Nigel I think uh, that could be the understatement of the year uh, what happened in that particular five minute period from uh, from Aston Villa wanting a free kick to Leeds going through to scoring then the mayhem on the benches players getting involved in uh, unsavory incidences then Leeds not knowing if they're going to allow him to go through and score uncontested uh, absolute crazy situation we will wait and see what the outcome of uh, from the FA over the next few days is but ultimately as a football match went on it was 1-1 both teams will be happy to take a point move on now to next week's at games and then go into the playoffs and then see where it takes both teams well it is finished 1-1 at Ellen Road it means that Sheffield United's promotion to the Premier League is confirmed on a day here we will remember for a long long time Russ